Father, we come to you this morning with joy, with love, with concerns, with fears, with grief, all of the emotions. Father, we come to you to praise you, to worship you, to learn about you, to meditate on your name, to love you as you have loved us, and to walk with you each and every day. Be with us now as we meditate on your word, as we discuss your holy name, and under, better understand your love that you have and provide for us each and every day. We ask this in Jesus' name, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Well, that was awfully weak. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. There you go. Because I, I knew you had a lot more pep and energy than that part. All right. Was uh, kind of puny. There you go. It was kind of puny, yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know me, I, my name is Gary Webster. And uh, you're going to have to put up with me for another 30 minutes here. And we're going to talk about uh, a topic that tends to make people squirm. Imagine that. We're going to talk about... Jesus. Now, the church says all about Jesus, and a lot of them say that. But uh, I saw a comic strip here uh, not too long ago, and it was a picture of a, of a the outline of a church building, and all the people were inside, and they were pushing on the doors, and Jesus was on the outside pushing on the doors trying to get in. And they were, one of the people on the inside said, don't let him in, he'll change everything. And so we have to remember that we have to let Jesus into our churches. We have to let Jesus into our lives so he can and will change us and change everything. So you talk to people about God, and they say, yeah, I, I believe in God. So let's, uh, let's look at James chapter 2, verse 19. And James made it very clear about those who believe or say they believe in God. And uh, we've been studying James uh, in uh, our Sunday school for the last uh, five, six weeks, something like that. We only have... So this is a short book. It's only supposed to be five or six weeks long. It'll be, I think I can stretch it out to about 12. But uh, let's look at uh, 219. And uh, you believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder, said James. So you believe in God. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Now, what did he mean by that? What did he mean that the demon shut? So let's look at, uh, let's go up here to Mark. Let's look at Mark chapter 1. All right, let's turn to Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> and I, did, I did not mark these in my Bible because taking me just as long to get there as you, so therefore we can all get there about the same time. Mark chapter 1, and we're going to start with uh, verses uh, 23 through 28, all right? And listen again to the word of the Lord. In verse 23 we start out, uh, uh, and this is uh, over a demon, there was demons in a, in a man, all right? And uh, the people were amazed at his teaching, all right? And, and amazed at his authority. And on chapter 23 in, in chapter 2, if Glenn will stop making all the oh, noise. I'm sorry. Uh, that's sure, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> this goes like this. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This is the demon speaking. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. Wow. And the evil spirit.
Spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. And news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Even the demons knew who Jesus was. Even the demons recognized the authority that Jesus had as God. So we say we believe in God. So then we have to include the Son. God-man. Son of man. Son of God. Holy man. Holy God. Right? So, this Jesus is why people squirm. They don't understand. Jesus, the man, human, skin and flesh and bones, has God. They don't, they don't understand it. It's hard to grasp that, that concept. Okay? So why do people act offended or put off if uh, Jesus is mentioned or discussed? Why, why is that? Why do you think they're offended? They don't want <laughs> Bingo, bingo, bingo. Three bingos. They don't want to change. They're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of the mysticism. They're afraid of letting go and allowing God to work in their lives through Jesus. They don't want to change. So, why are they not offended then? Or why don't they put up their defenses to second grade? When Buddha or Muhammad or Joe Smith or other professed gods are mentioned, why don't they? Because for them, the cross is foolishness. Because what? The cross is foolishness. You're going to speak up. Couldn't hear you. Because to them, the cross is foolishness. The cross is foolishness. Well, they're not Buddha and Muhammad and others professed gods set out man-made rules and guidelines and something tangible that they could grab onto. Right? And they're all dead. And they no longer exist. They still teach their teachings, but they no longer exist. Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is in this room right now. And he's in Bob and George and Sasha. He's in Craig. He's in each one of us today. Right? And we have to just remember that as we are going through our day. Jesus is not put away in a cute little box or backpack or a vending machine or a vending machine to be brought out when we need him. He's with us right now. He's with us when we woke up this morning. He's with us as we walk through the day. He's with us in our joys. He's with us in our grieving. He's with us in our concerns. And he wants a relationship with each one of us. And he wants us to use our God-given talents. And each of us have unique talents for God. And he wants us to use those to his glory. Wow. And I have to remind myself that all the time. I'm just like everybody else. I walk down the street, I get busy in my job, I get busy in what I'm doing. And all of a sudden I think, hmm, I've been through most of the day and I have not included Jesus in my life consciously today. It's a conscious effort. It's a lifestyle to have Jesus in your life. It's a lifestyle to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and walk with Him.
and that they are. So, Jesus uh, caused all sorts of problems because he said he was God. Right? Uh, he was one with the Father. He was raised from the dead. He lives today and others are dead. He taught that he was the only way to get to the Father. No one can get to the Father but through me, by me. Me. You know me, you know my Father. You know my Father, you know me. I am one with the Father. <coughs> he said that different times, different ways, meaning one thing. I am God in the flesh walking with you, talking with you, dining with you, suffering with you, loving you, teaching you. It's just, everything he did was to prepare you and I to receive him as our Lord and Savior. To glorify Abba, Father. And he prayed to Abba, Daddy, Father. I, I'm a, I, I like to read, uh, uh, one of my authors I like to read is, is Brennan Manning. And he talks about Abba and how Jesus prayed to his dad. Because they're one. But in his human form, he went out and prayed and was with the Father daily. And throughout the, the Gospels, we, we, we hear about Jesus going off to a quiet place to pray. Going up the side of the mountain to pray. Uh, being alone to pray. Teaching his disciples to pray. That's how he communicated with Abba, Daddy, the Father. To glorify the Father, he stayed in communication with the Father. And Jesus was God. Jesus is God. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Alright? So... Let's, let's see what Jesus said about his being God. Why did the, why did the Pharisees, uh, besides the fact that Jesus threatened the authority of the Pharisees and uh, was, was usurping the power of the Pharisees because he was preaching against the laws of the Pharisees and giving the people freedom to be saved through faith, not through the law, because no one could, could obey all the laws, all the rules and regulations. He was Messiah. So, originally the, the Pharisees saw Jesus as what? Blasphemous. Because he would heal people and he also said, your sins are forgiven. Right? Who had the authority to, who has the authority to forgive sins? God. Huh? God. God. God the Father. Abba. Has the authority, solely the authority, to forgive sins. So let's see what uh, let's see what Jesus said. We're going to go to the book of John. We're going to read half a dozen. Uh, uh, oh, about, looks like four uh, verses here in different chapters. Okay, Kevin, would you get uh, John chapter eight, verse nineteen? Bob, do you want to go to John twelve forty five? Who else got a Bible back there? No. All right, Craig, why don't you go to? To John 15:23, and you got a Bible back here? All right. That was 8:19. Uh, no, go to go to 5:23. Yes, that was 8:19 for you. 
And uh, is that jo uh, uh, Luke, right? Yeah. All right, Luke, uh, try uh, John 5.23. And Luke, you got some friends, James, John, and Peter. <laughs> Version, oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah, go to go to John eight nineteen. I'll I'll give you just a little more time, Kevin. Kevin's been a little under the weather this uh, this week. He's had a little uh, bout with pancreatic pancreatitis, and that's causing him some issues. So we'll we'll take a little mercy on him, give him a little extra time. He's got an excuse. Then they asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. So what's he saying there? If you knew me, you, knew, you would know my father also. He's an image. Okay. Picture. Any, anyone? Picture. <laughs> if you knew me, you'd know my father. Well, if you know him, you have to. Well, his father, God. Okay. okay. God the Father. So, so the Pharisees are looking at that no. and saying, "You're saying that the Holy God that we worship as Jews is your father, and you're standing here in flesh and blood. You're, and you're saying that that's blasphemy. That's 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 sinning against God. All right." So let's take a look at who has John 12, 45. Who had that one? Okay. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I come, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Now that's John 12, 45. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, is that 1 John 12, 25? No, he or, read off the gospel. He read off the gospel. You kept going. Okay, yeah. Yeah. just 45. When he, <laughs> when he, um, let's read 44 and 45 there, Bob. Just 44 and 45. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. When he, when he seeth me, he seeth the one who sent me. When he sees me, he sees the one that sent me. Uh, when a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. And when he sees me, he believes in the one who sent me. He's saying, I am God, I am one with the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. I am going to remain sinless in this world. I am going to show you how to live sinless in this world. I am going to teach you how to live sinless in this world as an example, not only by what I teach but how I live my life. For others? That makes people, that makes me cringe. Because I'm not without sin. And I have been broken multiple times and come back to God. And we're all there. And yeah, Jesus makes us squirm because he makes us walk the walk. Right? Pretty straightforward. Let's look at uh, John. Who has John 15, 23? Is that you, Craig? Yes, sir. Go for it. He that hateth me hateth the Father. He that hateth me hates the Father. So now he's just reversing it. He's saying, okay. You reject me, you say, you're a fake, Jesus. 
You're saying, God, you're a fake. So now you can no longer say you believe in God. Because you called me, Jesus, a fake. And therefore, that means you're calling God a fake. Right? And, and he, he brings that example up in more than one scripture. He says it a little differently. Uh, but uh, he, he uses that example a couple times in, in the gospel. It's a pretty powerful word. <laughs> if you hate me, you hate God. If you reject me, you reject God. You cannot say that you believe in God if you do not believe in me, the Son. Jesus, the Son. You walk, you walk away from me, you walk away from God. So now we, all these people that I told you about that comic where they're all pushing against the door and Jesus can't get in, they're not letting God into the church. They're not letting God into their lives. Because they won't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Heaven. Sometimes it's the Jesus they see in us that they hate. Really, really heavy. Who's got... Uh, do we do John 5.23? Okay, Luke. This 23? Yeah, speak up now. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. And he said, and he's saying the same thing he did there before. You hate me, you hate God. You don't honor me, you don't honor God. You don't honor God, you don't honor me. He's saying, we... Are one. What was it? Uh, here is a church, here is a steeple, open up the doors and see all the people as a kid. I, I don't know why I remember that, but that, that's it. And here we are, we're the people. We're in that church. We're, we're, we're being protected by this, this body of Christ that we are. When they see Jesus, they should see us. As we see Jesus, you should see us. When you see us, you should not see us. You should see Christ coming alive in us. We should all have halos. We should all glow in the dark with the love of Christ. I mean, it's just that simple. Actually, it's that difficult. Because we make it difficult. But we can simplify it by staying in the love of Christ and living our lives for Christ. I want to uh, I want to look at another uh, scripture this morning, Mark 14, 60 through 62. Harvey, do you have that? I don't want to say. You don't, you're not there yet? Why not? <laughs> I didn't give him any advance warning. <coughs> there you go. We're going to read Mark 4, chapter 14, verses 60, 62. I'm going to set this up before you start reading. This is when Jesus is in front of uh, Caiaphas. He's about to be uh, he's about to be sentenced, flogged, <coughs> and, and made to carry the cross out to uh, Golgotha and crucified. And Caiaphas is asking him questions about who he is. And what's that say, Harvey? It says, The high priest stood up and came forward and questioned Jesus, saying, Do you not answer? What is it that these men are testifying against you? But he kept silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And what did Jesus say? What did he, how did he start that out with? What did he say to start? I am. I am. I am. Where have we heard that before? Old Testament. Huh? Old Testament. Old Testament. Do and God right. said, I am who I am. Do the right. That's what he told Moses. That's what he told Moses. I am. I am. 
Now, and what did Jesus tell Caiaphas? I am. And he would have known what he meant. That's right. And Caiaphas would have known. Yeah, you bet. And the chief priests and, and all the priests knew what Jesus meant. They knew that phrase, I am who I am. Because they were familiar with the Old Testament scripture. Because they memorized it. <coughs> Torah. Alright. I am. I mean, it doesn't get any more clear than that. You don't have to use a, a, a bunch of flowery words. Three letters. I am. I am that I am. I am who I am. Wow. Let's see what uh, let's see what Paul said about Jesus. I'm going to read this in Philippians. It's one of my uh, one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. Philippians chapter two. Um, it's talking about. Paul is describing Jesus, all right, to the people of Philippi. So let's listen again to the word of the Lord. In Philippians 2, I'm going to start with uh, verse 4 through 11. It goes like this. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Okay, that's, that's pretty clear. We can do that. Your attitude... Oh, now he's going to get... You know, now he's going to get into my attitude. <laughs> should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Great. Now I brought that Jesus person into the conversation. Should be the... Your attitude should be that of Christ Jesus. Alright? So just what is that attitude? Love. Jesus, who being in very nature God, Paul is acknowledging that right now, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, flesh and bone, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, Paul is saying, we should take on the attitude of Jesus and humble ourselves, serving others as Christ served others. And He loved us so much, and He even died for us a terrible, ugly, painful death. The type of death that was used only for the worst of the worst. And that every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. He was a sacrifice. There we go. So now we're in Easter. We're into the time when this Sunday we celebrate Palm Sunday. Where Jesus rode into the Jerusalem on a colt, small young donkey. And... Only kings and emperors rode into the city. And the people threw their cloaks down and they threw palm leaves down. He would walk triumphantly into the city gates of Jerusalem. And they declared him, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna on high. Praise him. Those words are only meant for the king, only meant for the emperors and the generals coming back from victory after battle. And within the week, 
they humiliated him. They spat on him. They flogged him so, so terribly hard that he almost died from loss of blood. And stripped him naked. They mocked him in court. We call it a monkey court. Because they were afraid of their authority now. But they were also angry. These, these Pharisees were believing in God. They thought they were right. They couldn't understand, even after seeing all the miracles that Jesus performed, and how he loved them, they couldn't understand it. Now, isn't that funny? 2,000 years later, this world cannot understand the love of Christ, even though they've got the proof right here. And they say, oh no, they're fairy tales. Let's talk about the fairy tales. Let's talk about how I read recently where uh, one guy said, and, and this guy was an atheist prior to this, and, and he says, what really makes me believe in Jesus were the, uh, were the Nazis. And you go, what? He said, because at the Nuremberg trials, everybody turned on everybody. trying to save their own skin. He said, we have 12 disciples that were beheaded, crucified upside down, stoned, persecuted, and not one, not one denied Christ as their Lord and Savior. Not one denied Christ was God. Not one. History will tell you, psychology will tell you, that's proof of the pudding. So as we go into Easter week, let us remain to stay in an attitude of the love of Christ. And to take this man Jesus with us in our hearts, in our daily lives. And know that He is God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just uh, we just praise Your name. We thank You for Your Son. We thank You for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank You for Jesus who died on that cross, who bled for us that our sins may be washed away. We thank you for Jesus who walks with us each day. We thank you for Jesus who taught us by life example how to live and how to glorify you and your name. We thank you for Jesus who brought you to earth in human form that we may experience how we may live. Watch over us now as we go our separate ways. Help us to use our talents to glorify you, to show others that Jesus is alive and well in our hearts and minds and everywhere we go. And watch over us, Father, and keep us safe. We ask this in Jesus' name, our living Lord and Savior. Amen.